Mixed day on Wall Street as lawmakers look to add more stimulus to the economy. There is speculation the Senate could pass the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill as early as tomorrow. Now, despite the progress, investors may want to keep the antacid nearby. Our next guest considers the so-called summer of indigestion in full swings. Tony Dwyer is Canaccord Genuity's chief market strategist. Tony, always good to see you. Thanks for having me, Mel. Great to see you. So summer of indigestion, this is all because of rates? It really started in March. I, th I thought the discussion earlier in the show about the energy market was absolutely perfect. Because when you look back in March, and we had downgraded the financials and called for a, um, a pullback in rates, because they had just gone up to a historic degree on a 10-week rate of change, to a degree they had never done before. So they had discounted the incredible growth. So the summer of indigestion for me and, and my downgrade of the market in April was really all about the extensive move that you had in the cyclicals, the economic recovery trade. Everyone was familiar with the coming ramp in the growth rate, not just in the economy, but obviously earnings. And that was the time to worry about um, a pullback in some of the economic reopening theme, like the financials, the materials, the energy, and the industrials. And that seemed as improbable then, Mel, as it does now to actually look for a relative performance outperformance going to year end. But I think that's what's going to happen once we get through this choppiness period. Um, so what does no man's land feel like in terms of in terms of sector relative leadership and relative underperformance? Exactly what it is. I, you know, I, I love you guys know me well enough. Mel, we've done this long enough. I'll come on and I'll give you a real firm opinion when I have one. Uh, the summer of indigestion is you don't know what it's going to do day to day. On Friday, you're having a rip in the fine, uh, in the cyclicals because the employment report was above expectation, and today they're under pressure as oil comes down. And, and before the dollar had even moved today, I was I was asking around the trading community to kind of explain why energy and gold and silver were getting so smoked in the pre-opening, and I couldn't find a really conclusive reason. So the no man's land is we're intermediate term overbought. We have been all summer. Short term, we're volatile. VIX is going somewhere between 16 and 20, 20 ish. Um, and the sector rotation is unpredictable and dynamic on a week to week basis. But, Mel, what, what I really want to convey is this is exactly what happened after the first run higher in 2004 and 2010. You went into this summertime where, where rates went down. Nobody thought in the spring of 04 and 10 that rates were going to come down hard. They almost retested the great financial crisis low um, in, in the summer of 2010. Yet going into year end, it was all about the economic recovery theme. And I think that's our playbook. Tony, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. Let me ask you, what is it you're expecting sure. from the Fed? <laughs> OK, so the Fed is in they put them they haven't put themselves in the box. So I don't believe that the Fed is going to raise rates for a very, very, very long time, maybe, you know, years. Uh, I know people are saying 2023. There's just too much debt. They, they're, what they're doing is they're managing um, the yield curve and their, and their two mandates, talking about talking about the balance sheet. They haven't even had to do anything yet. They steepened the curve to almost 200 basis points just by talking down the likelihood of tapering. Then as soon as you get talk up of tapering, the market looks at it, okay, the Fed's ahead of the game. And that's what's called the, caused some of the, the drop in yields. What's been interesting, Karen, and it, it goes back again to that energy comment, the inflation break-evens, long-term inflation break-evens, held up a lot better than rates. And that's been true. So if you actually get a little bit of a bump higher in inflation break-evens, I think that while people are fearful of the downside in interest rates, I think we can go back above that one and a half level into year end really creating an opportunity for the Fed to steepen the yield curve without having to move. So what's the bottom line on this call, Tony? I mean, is it that the markets just go sideways close to record highs for the I mean, is that what indigestion is or do we so, see a pullback? So what, no, what is I this? Have, I have a whole ton of clients like most of us do on a relative basis. I think you've seen the worst in the in the financials, materials, energy and industrials. I think you probably you gave back all of the relative performance, but I haven't upgraded them yet because on an absolute basis, what I think is going to happen is you're still going to have a little bit of a pullback. I don't you know, I don't it's got it's got to come from higher rates, though, because every time you have this fear of economic slowdown, you have the secular growth names get a bid. And they're the ones that dominate the S&P 500. The S&P 500 equal weighted index, 
the tran transportation index, the advanced decline line, all of these, the small cap and mid cap indices, they're all sideways since April. It's the S&P is being elevated by the bid on the mega cap secular growth names. Uh, I think you have to lose that bid to really correct the market. And that's got to come with higher rates, which means value or cyclical should go down less and you want to attack any weakness you get there, meaning buy them. All right, my producers are going to scream at me, Tony, but we've been doing this for a long time and, and you're usually very direct. And so it doesn't sound like you think rates are going to go higher anytime soon. And so are you basically saying that we're just going to sort of, rates are, yeah, are not think, going to go? Yeah, I think, so I think the playbook is rates bump up about one and a half percent. I think last week at 112, we, we wrote a piece called Not So Unique, because both in 2004 and 2010, you had this massive decline in the 10-year note yield going into October of those years. But the bottom in the relative performance for the cyclicals, and actually the, in the last four months of the year, your best performance was in the cyclicals, even though rates had still a little bit more downside growth. So net net, I think into year end, uh -huh. I think rates are going higher and cyclicals are up, will out. Got it. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Tony Dwyer, Canaccord Genuity. Pete and Jerry, what do you think of this call? It sounds like he's expecting a little bit of a pullback, Mel, but I like his call because of the fact that I think he's right about seeing at least from the sounds of it, he's, he still likes energy materials, financials in terms of going to the upside. And he's also continues to hit on these rates. And he, he and I were talking not too terribly long ago about the 10 year and where it is at the time. And that was a few weeks ago when, the, when it was much lower than it is now. So I think he's on the right path, Mel. I think that we, we could see some pullbacks, but if we don't, we have that indigestion cycle and then we start to move higher based on those three different categories. Yeah, so this feels a lot like last year at the exact same time to me, if you think about it, especially if we're all going to say that the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 seem to be impervious to all the other things that are causing volatility to almost every other risk asset. And I'll just remind you that in September of 2020, the S&P went down about 10 percent in a straight line. And some of your most favorite names, the sort of names that might be vulnerable if rates go higher. So if Tony is right and the 10 year Treasury yield goes back above one and a half, they got slammed. Apple and Amazon were each down 20% on a down S&P in one month. Okay, and just I'm just saying, in one month. So the biggest peak to trough decline we've had in the S&P all year long was 5.5%, and that happened 190 days ago. So what I'm saying is, is things feel pretty complacent right here. I think there are some warning bells going on in other places, not about a crash, but about a proper correction that might be a great setup for a lot of equity investors into year end.